So today we're going to talk about liver diseases specific to pregnancy and there's four diseases that we're going to talk about. Basically you would not see these diseases if, unless the patient were pregnant. Uh, first one is hyperemesis gravidarum and this is uh, nausea and vomiting pregnancy results in a 5% weight loss starvation, dehydration. It's worse uh, between 8 and 18 weeks uh, and uh, you might see some uh, AST elevation and uh, maybe a slight hyperbilirubinemia and uh, maybe a prolonged protein. But uh, once the patient's eating these liver enzymes are corrected and the protein goes back to normal and, and the patient gets well and, and there's no long-term consequences of uh, the liver disease and hyperemesis gravidarum. The second uh, thing that you'll see is uh, preeclampsia and various manifestations of that. So preeclampsia seen about 5 to 10 percent of pregnancies. Uh, it's a panendothelial disease so it's it's a disease of the lining of the blood vessels, can affect anything from the head to the foot, uh, and uh, it's manifested primarily by hypertension and protein in the urine. Uh, so the, if you do a liver biopsy on patients with uh, preeclampsia, there's a number of liver diseases that you'll see. Uh, the, the uh, mildest one is just uh, periportal hemorrhage and fibrin deposition. And uh, you can see this on liver biopsy in patients with preeclampsia, and it goes away with delivery. The second thing that you'll see is uh, HELP syndrome. And uh, HELP syndrome is uh, hemolysis, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, wearing blender syndrome. They have fragmented red cells on the peripheral smear and increased LDH level. Elevated liver enzymes and AST greater than 72. And low platelets, the platelet count less than 100,000. So uh, you could talk for an hour about HELP syndrome, but probably the main point is that this is not uh, something that you can scratch your head and walk away, uh, order some lab tests and show up the next day. This is usually an urgent clinical situation and you often have to make a decision about when and how you're going to deliver the patient without having all the information you might like to have. So, urgent clinical situation. Uh, a, sec a third thing is infarction of the liver, which is kind of neat because uh, if you have somebody with, say, an ALT, AST of uh, 6,880, uh, one of the things you want to think of is an infarct of the liver. So the liver has a dual blood supply like the lung, and you would hardly ever see an infarct of the liver unless the patient had preeclampsia. It's made, uh, diagnosis is made uh, by a CT scan. It shows uh, uh, hypodensities in the, in the liver, They're scattered around uh, in the liver. The fourth thing is uh, hematoma and uh, rupture of the liver with preeclampsia. Um, so the Hematoma can be uh, subcapsular, so the, the liver is surrounded by a glistens capsule, and you get a hemorrhage here uh, and displaces the hepatic parenchyma. Or you could have deep interparenchymal hemorrhages. So this one is likely to rupture and cause shock, and deep interparenchymal hemorrhages are not going to rupture. And these are diagnosed by ultrasound or usually CT. And the treatment is uh, to stabilize 
and deliver the patient, get rid of the preeclampsia, and then these hematomas are absorbed slowly. Not much happens, and uh, you have to do serial CT scans monthly, and say in 12 weeks or so, these clots may be absorbed. Uh, you try not to rupture the hematoma, don't examine the liver, don't, don't be pressing on the liver. Uh, if it does rupture, uh, you'll know it, and, uh, and, and then you need a trauma surgeon. And uh, that's the most comparable situation of people. That, so what, what they'll typically do is put packs in and come back the next day. Other things that have been done is to resect the lobe of the liver or even remove the liver and maintain the patient anapatic for a, a few days uh, until you can uh, get a, a liver to transplant. But that's a drastic treatment for something that's... Uh, usually uh, response to supportive care. So those are the big problems with uh, preeclampsia. So the third disease that you'll see is uh, intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. And this is uh, something we see fairly frequently and uh, The main way to describe it is that the patient is itching and not sick. So they have intense itching, it's just intolerable, it's worse in the hands and feet. You get 11 o'clock at night and you're trying to go to sleep and it's just uh, itching. The patients are begging you to be delivered and uh, uh, it's just kind of a, a bad situation. Uh, uh, it, it usually presents in the third trimester, although it can be earlier. Uh, I've seen several cases recently, of, a couple of cases recently, of starting at 24 weeks. Uh, and you diagnose it by seeing uh, increasing fasting, elevated fasting bile acids. It has to be fasting because just eating can, can increase your bile acids by about threefold. So increased fasting bile acids, uh, an increased AST and ALT, usually usually less than 500, but uh, you can see 7800 uh, in the enzymes. Now, the cause of intrahepatic cholestasis is uh, uncertain. Um, there's some genetic predisposition. Uh, there's some studies uh, that show that it occurs in families. It's commonest in Chile and Scandinavia. It's commonest in there's common in Hispanic patients from Mexico. Uh, you'll often have a history of uh, I've got it now, and my mother had it with me. Um, so there's a genetic predisposition, and then estrogen seems to interfere with. Uh, elimination of, of uh, conjugated bilirubin and causes uh, cholestasis. In fact, if you do a liver biopsy, you see no inflammation but just a cholestatic picture in, in the liver. And uh, often if they take birth control pills, they can get it. Uh, now, uh, generally, there's a bunch of different things that can be used to treat cholestasis, but ursodeoxycholic acid is what we typically use 300 milligrams three times a day and uh, uh, other things that have been used are phenobarbital 100 milligrams a day to induce hepatic microsomal enzymes uh, cholestyramine uh, say four grams three times a day before meals uh, but urso seems to be the, the, the best thing uh, uh, for the itching and even that doesn't work that well I'd say the most uh, important thing is that it's not safe for the fetus and so uh, we do antepartum heart rate testing as soon as you make the diagnosis even if it's at 26 weeks um, and uh, try to deliver at 37 weeks um, to try to prevent a stillbirth because you can have death of the fetus within a day or two of a reactive non-stress test 
pneumocodium aspiration in utero, fetal distress in labor, and so uh, it's not really known exactly what is causing this, but uh, when we make this diagnosis, we, we generally plan on, on delivery at, th at 37 weeks without any amniocentesis. Um, it can recur, and uh, it can recur with birth control pills. Although I've seen patients that had five kids in the first four, they didn't have cholestasis, and the fifth that they did, I've seen it. Uh, have it skip pregnancies, uh, had it the first, missed the second, had it the third time. I've seen people would take birth control pills with no problem. So uh, uh, it's a somewhat uh, variable disease, but intrapatic cholestasis of pregnancy.